Hello and welcome back to Adam. Before we head further uh, into the factory, I just want to explore a little bit on the outside of it, just to see what the hell is going on. Uh, seems like we can leave the area. And, uh, wow. These people. Tonya is loving uh, that moustache man. And that other guy uh, loves Donya, but actually he thinks that Donya is a man. And that's what his, uh, well, that's what his heart desires. So... Sure. It's, it's, a, it's a bit odd. Not quite what I would have expected from these uh, bandits. Oh, can I go up? Hmm. Oh, maybe I can move it? Nope. Is there a way to get inside? It's an electric chest. Can I destroy it? Not a scratch. Uh, what about that? So I can't do anything with that. Maybe I can blow it up. Can I climb up the ladder? <clears throat> uh, that's not an option. So apparently, it, there's some loot in there. I don't think we can run in. Ignoring this uh, cupboard of s something in the way. Uh, that doesn't seem like the case. Nope. So we can go in. Maybe we gotta find... Oh. A mushroom? Probably not. So it's still... Uh, maybe we gotta find uh, some kind of explosives. Uh, exactly like that. But apparently not that. Wait, what? Oh, you have radiation poisoning. Crap, sorry about that. My bad uh, for um, making you run near the, the truck with the obvious uh, radiation burrows. Huh. I don't know what these are. Hmm. I'm not sure. Something must be in here, though. Herbal mix. Uh, sure. Let's take that. Coffee, fork, tea. Why not? And the condom. <laughs> sure. I mean, it might be past the expiration, expiration date a little bit, and it's radiated, but it's still the best we got. So... Oh, what? Is it possible? Huh. The car looks pretty good, but I won't be able to fix it on my own. Wow. So, it's been hinted that I might be able to get some kind of help or maybe a companion to help me with this. And we can get a car. Most likely. Oh yeah, skinny dipping. Here we go. No, we can't do it. So, we got to go back to the factory, but we did learn something that we can get a car. It's something to look forward to, most definitely. Uh, we just gotta run back. Are you doing it? Okay, the pathfinding is not too bad. I suppose. At least she's running. I'm gonna kill every single one of you, you bastards! She does look a little crazy, uh, running with the knife out, uh, non-stop. I would be somewhat concerned. So, yeah, more stuff. Why not? Yeah, I might just craft something. Ah, uh, that would be nice. Oh, look at this guy! Didn't I talk to him already? No, I believe no. <clears throat> 
Hey, let me ask you some questions. Are you interviewing me or something? <clears throat> about uh, free men... What? About how free men live? Yes. Things like that happened during my second stretch. The future prison guards were sent to us. So... The can... Le learn their guard trade... The fuck? So the can... So they can... Oh, I see. So they can learn their guard trade in real life, not sitting behind a, a desk. So many questions. So curious, goddammit. It's like the zoo. Oh, damn it. I got carried away there. Go on, ask what do you want. I don't really want to have to this. Border, do you have something good? Oh, he has two shotgun pellets. Four of freaking fortune. Tell me some rumors. I was quite the rumor monger some time ago, 10 years ago to be precise. I was literally obsessing over hearsay on a particular topic I asked everyone about, but nobody could tell me any rumors about it, because it concerned a place that was considered far away even before the war, and now it's considered unreachable. But one day, me and the boys, we got ourselves a merchant from distant lands, he had a portable safe traveling with him. Oh man. And he didn't want to open it. Uh, so the boys sent me uh, to help uh, him remember the combination. But when I got to him, I started asking him about uh, the, my thing instead. Tell me, I said. Is there still a city called Truda whatever near Kaba? Kabarovsk? Kabarovsk? Did it survive the war? Is it safe? The merchant said nothing at first. I asked him again, like I did a thousands of others, but he wasn't like one, like one of them. Because he finally gave me an answer, after whimpering and crying for a bit. What did he say? There is no more through the Zod Zodovsk, he said. That's why he said. This city only lives in local legends. I traveled near the place it once occupied uh, with the Guangzhou caravan. I didn't even see a single building left. It's a barren plain now, a place of ashes and some bleached rocks. That's how he answered, you know? I should have uh, felt happy about it. Finally, my rumor hunt was over. But instead of getting all sentimental, I strangled him and sank his uh, fucking lockbox in a ditch. Because Trudozadvotsk was my city of birth. Yep, left my mama there. Left without saying goodbye. Deep in my heart, I always knew. The city was probably destroyed in the war. I felt that mom never survived. How could she? I, yeah, I guess I always knew that, would, that I would never see her again. But this doubt kept perhaps a foolish hope alive. But this asshole has described it so he said it sharply and bluntly. I can still, still see the ash before my eyes, even though I have never seen it myself. My home, my mother, Yurka, my older brother and everyone whom I dreamed of seeing, however briefly before I die, all gone with that ash. That's why I will say this, don't ask for any for hearsay, sometimes it's better to not know. My condolences, I better go. Uh, that makes sense, because, well, he didn't live uh, their death, like, in a way, but now it's maybe, well, real. I guess we can say he was in denial, but not like he, he cared too much in the first place. So, but I still suppose it can be uh, considered denial, but you don't know. You don't know for sure. So, that's that. And cook here, but do I want to? 
prepare Mamag. Mamag, yeah. Okay. Leave. Did I eat something? Okay, what is this? Whoa! Looks like a French painter guy. Before you stands a tan man in a dirty apron, uh, there's a butcher knife on his belt. He stirs something inside a pot that that hangs over the fire. Must be the local chef. Upon seeing you, the man nods. Hello there, new girl. Looking for the rations? It's not time yet. You need uh, to work for Dan for a little while, then come back. But if you just need some things, we could bargain. That's easy for us. What about a discount? Oh, no you don't. We are not a soup kitchen. If you want food, you buy it full price. Okay, show me what you got. Selling an axe. I actually don't have enough dexterity to use the axe properly. What the hell? Eh. Well, I'll, I'll leave. You know? Screw you, man. You need to feed people so they're happy. And they do the jobs right. What's going on here? Before you stands Sean Connery. Uh, sad, sad, sad copy. Before you stands an old man with a scruffy beard. His unhappy gaze is upon the wounded man lying in bed. The old man sighs from time to time, looking over the yellowing bandages on his friend's chest and stomach. Good day. I hope I'm not interrupting. I see you're not in the mood. The man looks at you with sorrow in his eyes. You're not disturbing. Don't worry. It's all good. These jackals put a hole in my old friend Leonka. Assholes. I'm now looking after him. The fever is gone. He isn't aggressive anymore. So we can talk now. You did want to ask something, or did you just come by? When I feel Paul. Some creeps, all kinds of scum were wandering around here, preventing us from maintaining order. But it's good that uh, we made sure they went to the other world. Jerks. <laughs> you can ask him yourself. You seem like a straightforward kind of girl, but still leave a nice impression. People say that to me all the time. But I just start started speaking to them. Why would you... It's just giving compliment to people that you just met? This, this is a bit empty, isn't it? <clears throat> also, like people telling me that they trust me after I said, said hi. And telling me their life story. What the hell? I don't buy it. So... I see. Care to answer more questions? <clears throat> Fine. Maybe I'll tell you something interesting. Oh, really? Tell me some rumors. I saw many ruffians in my time. Even acted like uh, well many years ago. Lots of folks went to heaven because of what I did to them. But those three brothers that wanted to join us a few months ago. Damn. They were complete savages. More than any bandit I ever met. Even the young one was completely crazy. Then sent them on a test mission. They didn't return uh, from it though. So maybe we won't have uh, crazy people like that. A uh, lot like joining us. Uh, our ranks after all. I see. What are you busy with? In my old age. Field work is not that easy. I mostly help out with advice, but on some occasions I can do something more action-oriented. Alright, I'm gone. It's Vimprink. Apparently I need to do some stealing over here. Or... I believe so. Oh, this... Is there something on these shelves? I'll, I'll take your meat. Gunpowder. Well, I'll be thinking that. 
Same thing is very welcome. Some guy. I can steal their bullets. You got sent into his boot again. Oh, don't! I'm not trying to steal anything. Can we steal from him? Okay, he is is not that concerned about me trying to uh, steal anything from him directly, but I suppose it doesn't. Result in a in a quick load, uh, quick save fest at least. So you try it once, they tell you to bug off. You can't try it ever again. Before you, you stands a broad-shouldered man with cold, cruel eyes. He quietly talks about something with his comrade, but at the sight of you, he turns and looks at you from his under under from under his brows. There's an unpleasant smile on his face. It looks like he's planning something malicious about you. Hey, then said me. Are you by any chance Shishak? Maybe yes, maybe no. What did Dan say to you? Did you know what he told me? The man spits and looks at you with a cold stare. At last, he shakes his shoulders and takes out a bunch of keys. He reluctantly begins to sort them out. <clears throat> Who cares? Well, I guess you won't won the lottery today. I'm Shushak. And now I'll give you a little test. Let's wait patiently. Shushak starts uh, whistling to himself. He's checking the keys for the second round and has absolutely no plans to somehow accelerate this process. <clears throat> To unlock this door, little piggy. And as you can see, there's a whole ocean of keys on this ring. A good portion of them do not open anything at all in the camp. Just being there when I found it. I never get around to sort them out. Hope that you understand. Okay, let's wait. Shishak yawns and lazily crunches his neck. He then proceeds to search for the right key. He does not hurry, periodically throwing up some meaningless phrases to a man that stands next to him. He's obviously talking, taking his time. What is the correct one? I can't seem to remember. Excuse me, <clears throat> little piggy. It's a bit awkward, really. Uh, yeah, real awkward. Yeah, such is life. Time flows. It feels like Shishak already forgot about the right key, about you and everything in the world. He deliberately, slowly and thoughtfully drives his finger along the bunch, stretches and only occasionally raises his eyes at you to slightly grin. Finally, he snaps his finger and takes out an unremarkable brass key. Oh, here it is. Well, you see how fast am I? <clears throat> I am. No need for nagging, girl. Click, click. Oh no. I hope this is not... Oh, this is not my cell. Hey, hey, hey! Do I need to kill him? I love him, no problem. So what are we doing here? I already got my knife out. Look at here, little piggy. We keep our guest in this room. Oh, so much reading. He swiftly uh, squats in front of the prisoner, making him instinctively recoil in the opposite direction, and shrunk even more than before. Shishak uh, then starts rhythmically clapping his hands near the prisoner's head. The prisoner winces with every clap. He was a little tense. His silence made no sense. I saw the little piece of crap and put him in a body bag. Huh, why are you so antsy? Stop shivering. Look me in the eyes, you stupid fuck. The prisoner blinks in fear and carefully raises his watery eyes on Shishak. The bandit clicks his tongue and dabs his uh, large fist to the prisoner's face. The prisoner shuts his eyes. But Shishak only grins and dusts off his pants. He looks at you and spreads his hands. <clears throat> 
He's a nervous fellow, and a bit tentacurn, but maybe it's because of the gag. <laughs> Who is he? Some schmuck from Otradnoye. Talked a lot, got a wide smut swat about his money. What, was it worth it? I don't think so. So now he's sitting in our luxury apartments. And believe you, me, when I say that in the beginning, I was cautious with him. Just gave him a couple of quick chin checks. That's all, but he kept screaming. Something in the lines of, I said some stupid things, I have nothing on me. He's bluffing, I'm telling you. Hmm. So I need to beat some money out of him? Okay, what do you want me to do? Look here, your job is easy peasy. Shishak reaches into his bosom and gets a Polish TT gun. He hands it to you. Grip forward. Here's a gun. It has one bullet. Here's this mutton head. The rest is up to you. I give you a full carte blanche. You may kill him right away or execute him first. Do as you want. I don't really care since he keeps harping on the same string. I have no money. I'm not a millionaire. Only the grave can fix him. Or some vigorous beatings on important organs. I see. So this is the guy that... The, that we are looking for. I'm not sure how he's called, but... How is he called? Is he like the mechanic? I'm not sure, but... We'll see. <clears throat> the bound prisoner begins to shudder. He mumbles or something uh, with the gag still in his mouth. He looks at you with uh, a mixed expression, with hope and fear at the same time, but more with fear. Shishak walks a couple of steps and begins to watch with interest. The second thug joins him. I'm not gonna aim at Shishak. I'm just gonna hit the prisoner with the pistol grip. Let's start with that. You swing and hit the prisoner with the pistol grip. The man silently shrinks and instinctively hides his head in his shoulders. Shishak grins and wink at his com companion. Look at this gal! <laughs> That's a woman who enjoys what she's doing. What? I'm supposed to keep hitting him? Should I aim at Shishak? Let's aim at the prisoner. You raise the gun at the prisoner. The bounded man begins to quietly whimper and slowly uh, creeps away from you. You can read pleading and fear in his deer-like gaze, which is fixated on the muzzle of the gun. Shoot him in the head, shoot him in the stomach, shoot him in the leg, let's lower the gun. The bounded prisoner is breathing heavily, shriveling at your feet and looking down. Chishak is grinning with a sadistic grin while he, his companion is just picking his teeth with a match. Let's do nothing. You look at the gun in your hands, then at the faded prisoner, and then cross your arms over your chest and uh, silently look at Shishak. He glowers at you. What the hell is wrong with you? Do something. <coughs> yeah, we already did everything but shoot the prisoner. I can aim at Shishak. You point the gun at Shishak and squint one eye. At first, the man flinches, but quickly comes to his senses and looks at you with contempt. Is some kind of a joke? We can shoot him in the head. Let's do it. If we're doing it, we do it. Let's shoot him in the head. You pull the trigger and nothing happens. Instead of a shot, you hear only a clicking sound. <laughs> oh my fucking god. This is awkward. We're so dead. <laughs> so dead. The clip is empty. You look up at Shishak, who seems to be frozen mid movement. <laughs> oh, for a moment, your eyes meet, and immediately it becomes clear as day. The bell is inevitable. Oh. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. We need to reload. This is bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aim at the prisoner and shoot him in the head. I guess that's what we gotta do. You pull the trigger and nothing happens. Instead of a shot, you hear only a clicking sound. The magazine is empty. You look at Chishak in astonishment while the unscathed little unscathed captive quietly sobs on the floor. Chishak cheerfully winks at you and takes the gun from your hands. Ha! Huh. And you thought that it was loaded, little piggy. Oh come on, this lucky bastard can still come in handy. I feel that he didn't tell us everything, but you also demonstrated yourself from an interesting angle. Try to just shoot him in the in cold blood. Ah, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I, if I, if I really, that's the that's my only choice. If there is no way to save him. I don't know. Should I just go out of my way to torture him? Because that's what I tried to do previously. That I just whip him with a gun. I did nothing. I was I was hoping to somehow bust him out, maybe. But I don't know the guy. Probably, maybe I don't want to risk my life for him. That's a very real possibility. Because I, I kind of have to look out for number one as well. Because I'm, I'm, I'm all okay for it. Okay, we're just going to walk away. I, I suppose we can just do that. Because I can't take out these guys. Uh, by myself to, to to save some guy I don't even know. So yeah, I guess if it just comes down to like endless torture or or death, I think maybe the the secondary option could be could be uh, preferable. If this is just because he's gonna get killed anyway, I, I don't know. Like I'm not sure how I feel about that because ultimately, like if you're dying anyway, I don't know. Obviously, this is not the outcome I was I was hoping hoping for, but uh, this is what the game kind of forced me to do. The man calls his friend and whispers something in his ear. Then he slaps him on the back, and Shmir darts off and uh, runs out of the room. Now go. Let's see what Dan will have to say about all of this. You have some interesting tests here. See ya. Can I talk to the guy? <clears throat> Before you stands a must mustached man in his 40s, he's white as a sheet, and his captors had uh, put a gag of dirty cloth in his mouth. His arms and legs are bound with a sweet soaked rope. He looks around the room with desperation, periodically stopping his gaze on you so obvious that the only way to free him is to cut the ropes. I can do that, but I can't do that. I can try doing that, but obviously that's never gonna happen. I don't have the... F this is interesting because... I picked up conversation options and like uh, social skills to give me more options, but by not being not a better fighter actually at this point if i could f fight better i would actually I, I might be able to save the prisoner but i can't i can't save the prisoner there's zero chance i can do it i don't even have a gun so this is never gonna work so this is a bit of a bummer can i talk to that guy before you stands a slim busy looking man he watches you silently apparently he doesn't want to start the conversation. Let me ask you some questions, hey? How's life? <laughs> it's okay, lost a buddy some time ago. He went to Krasno, you know, to score some babes. Said he'll spend the night at some old hag's gas station on the way to the city. Nobody's seen him since. Maybe I should go look for him? To hell with it. It's on him for having chosen the most crooked way to the city. If that cheat is gone, he's gone. 
I owed him money anyway. <laughs> Okay, sure, let's go. So we need to go back to Dan. It's really hard to know who is who. They look different, but some of them are moving around and you just don't even know their names. This is kind of like the hardcore style. They are not even highlighted. You, you just gotta find them. I can't imagine how much stuff I missed already. Oh, Bosch. I've done the test, Mr. Dan. Dan nods. Uh, extricates a notebook from his inner pocket and consults his mysterious notes. Then he hides it back in the depths of his jacket and looks at you. We both know that already. You're a curious case. Why is that? You didn't strike me as a woman who could kill a person without even thinking twice. I'm interested in what was driving you. Go on, tell me. I'm just, I'm just that cold-blooded, that, that's all. I didn't want to kill him. Maybe hurt a little, in the worst case. That man has suffered already. This is our chance to like, sell ourselves as a super badass. I was given a gun, I was shown a target. What was so surprising about it? I suspected that the gun wasn't loaded. I just say this because it's gonna give me some serious respect to these people. Your reaction is surprising. No ruminations, no pangs of conscience. actually like killing. Pity I had no cartridge. <laughs> I try not to think about it. That's why I've said you're a curious case. Murder is a good toll. If there's a person, there's a problem. If there is no person, there's no problem. But you shouldn't overdo it. Bloodlust always gets in the way of business. That is for you to decide. Okay, so <clears throat> I had a different task in store for you. But seeing that you are such an aggressive little lady, there will be something else for you to do. It should be handled without gloves, so to speak. Blood might be spilled. Tell me the details. There's a hut not far from the factory. It's, it occurred, <clears throat> occurred to a group of adventurous guys to brew moonshine there. There are plenty of people who would never say no to a drink, so their business goes uphill. <clears throat> they rake in money and other valuable things, and they don't really like to share. So your task is as simple as a piped mace's design. You go to their den and convince them to side with us. You're at uh, liberty to resort to take Measures you see fit. In other words, the moonshines must either pay us for our protection or lose everything. What if the words are enough to convince them without violence? Even better, my guys don't know the first thing about producing moonshine. So the less actual damage you cause, the better. What if I accidentally do them in? Anything might happen in a skirmish. Well, this might serve as a good lesson for the locals, but I wouldn't want it to go that far. After all, their business is quite lucrative, and we are not rich enough to wreak havoc right, left, and center. Okay, understood. Where should I start? You should start with going to the moonshiners and convincing them to pay us for protection. Give me your map, I'll show you where the camp is. Thanks, I'm off. Okay, we need to get more XP, more gear, whatever. We need it. We need to head out. So we did check out the factory. I'm, I'm working for them, kinda, right now? I do have some skills. But the problem is that I'm just... I just die. We'll see.
I do wanna distribute my skills. So, there's Bert, Drunken Bar. Apparently, there's some stuff here, so we may as well check it out. Oh, I'm hungry. I don't know, let's eat that. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna use it. I'm radiated and poisoned. Not the best. You notice free wanderers standing around the campfire. Would you like to stop and have a talk with them? Let's check it out. <clears throat> maybe they have some guns. Okay, maybe they can give me some guns. You see a tired man of about 30. His face is lacerated. In his strong, callous hands, he holds an old rifle. The barrel is not aimed at anyone in particular, but travels from side to side, as if ready to take aim at one of the man's companions at any second. Really? Upon seeing you, the man lifts his weapon. Oh, another one appeared! Come on, girl! No need to scare me like this. I could have shot you, you know. Calm down, I need to ask some questions. I always questions. What are you standing here for? We're standing because I said so. I'm not leaving this place until I know what's what. We're going to Krasno. Me, these two guys and the driver. First they turned out okay. Ashok pointed the way since he's our guide. Boris drove fine like always. Even knowing his uh, UAZ go so good. We spent uh, the night at uh, old lady Nadia's cabin. She's a great old crone, you know. Even though she's crazy about cats, she told us a story about new kind of about a new kind of mutant living at uh, the local swamp. The leather worm, the one hell of a beast, looks like a thin snake or a large worm. <clears throat> if one of those critters sneaks inside your skull through the ear, it's the end of you. He'll possess your brain and uh, your whole body will be his and he'll do it so well no one would have the skills to tell the difference. The biggest clue would be this. A possessed person will start mixing up names, forgetting some small events from the past. Oh my god, this is dumb. So much talking. My my mouth dries out. <laughs> oh, another thing. The possessed human turns into a cannibal. Wow, really? It's a science word for man-eater. That's the story old Nadia told us. And on the next day, we got into a car crash. It was probably raining a few days ago, so the road got all mushy. Looked like solid gravel, but in reality it was slippery as heck, so we drove off the road. Off road. <clears throat> and found ourselves in the middle of the same swamp the crone told us about. And that's not even the worst of it. We got separated while getting out of here. Boris sank, I fell, I should run away somewhere, and Zevwald done got no what outside anyone's view for 10 minutes or so. As a result, I don't trust any those two no more. Who knows, maybe one of them is possessed by the letter worm. Just don't shoot anyone who is human. Man, as for me, I better go. Yeah, I don't know. Pretty creepy, can I help you somehow? I wish you would just shut up. <laughs> it looks at you suspiciously. How can you help me out? If one of them is possessed, he'll never show it until you turn your back to him at least. I can try and talk to, with the others to get a conclusion. So maybe we can get everybody to kill each other. 
You see a nervous looking uh, black haired fellow of about 20 years. He stands cross arms, sighs, and nervously glances at his companions and you. What an unlucky situation, damn it. Uh, hey, can I ask you about Stoof? Just be careful about it. Have you heard anything interesting lately? Tell me about yourself. I'm Eshok Kasparov. I'm a guide for those two, you dig? I know the locale well, so I agreed uh, to lead those two to Krasno. Well, not two. They were free in the beginning, but now I doubt they're... They are the same people that hired me. That's how it is. But how does every single one of you believe in this letter snake? I see. Why the vigil? It's not a secret. Well, what else can I do? I won't go with them, that's for sure. They hired me to lead their car to Krasno. Everything went well in the beginning. The driver is the drove. I pointed out the way. We spent the night. At, yeah, old lady Zina's dilapidated uh, gas station. She's quite the woman, you know. And she has a funny dog named Toby. So we have to check. <sighs> who's, uh, whose story doesn't match us with the others. But with morning, rain started. Real downpour. And the driver couldn't handle uh, his vehicle, smashed into some tree. And we plunged right into the swamp. Barely made it out alive. One more minute and we sink to the bottom along with the UAZ. Just like the poor driver. But when we finally got out, we suddenly knew where we are. On the skin worm swamp. A skin worm is a is the critter, mutant, that crawls inside people through their mouths. And starts controlling their bodies, you dig? And it's so good at it, nobody can tell the difference until it's too late. Yeah, but that's just dumb. Ah, uh, I don't know if I care about this. Until it leads you to some deserted place and starts eating your damn meat. So I ran from the swamp. But those two, they didn't. Got lost or something. We regrouped only when we got out of the swamp. So now... So how do I know the skin worm didn't get them? How do I guide them to the city, if they may strangle me as soon as I, I turn my back? Well, good luck with that. It's quite the tale. Can I help you out? Oh, you really want to help? Uh, that's good. Very good. But you will... Well, 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 but were you able to? A real human has little to no differences from with a person controlled by this mutant. They fully copied the original. Though, they may mix up some memories occasionally, forget some names or details, but that's it. Well, I can try. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to hear this story three times. You see a serious middle-aged man with uh, clean-shaven cheeks, hidden bald spot and neatly trimmed mustache. He is dressed in a brown suit, red shirt and patent leather shoes. His surprisingly rich costume for a traveler is complemented by gilded eyeglasses and a metallic chain on his fat neck. The man looks at you angrily. He's obviously very tense about something. Oh hey lady, are you local? Come on, speak up. I'm running out of patience with these two idiots. Um, yeah. Quiet down! Save your screen for your wife or something! The man lets out a disappointed gasp. Damn it, shit! How much longer should I sit here with these two nutjobs of all people? The man casts a hateful glance at his companions. Oh, fuck my life. Can I ask you a few questions? Ask away. What else is there for us to do but talk? Who are you? The man looks surprised but then shakes his head as if remembering the, that nobody here knows him. Um, Svevolod Markelov the name. Trade is my game. 
I'm the famous owner of the Markolov and Son Cooperative. What? You never heard of such? Unfucking believable. What is this shit ho? Sorry, I never came across it. The man angry looks into the uh, point somewhere on the horizon and sighs sadly. Tell me about yourself. I thought that I already told you. Yeah. Don't, don't split. Can I ask another question? So what happened here? I'm a wealthy intelligent man. Got stuck here with the, these two chimps. And that's what happened here. I was invited to a local mayor city, Krasno, to have a talk with the Chamber of Commerce representatives. I tried to grow my business in any way possible, so I took the offer without a second thought. Got my best outfit and some samples of my wares. I had a guide, took my best guard, and I thought he was my best, at least, and got Boris on the wheel, and then we moved out into this rotten corner of the wastes. What happened next? After that, there was the road, or should I say, the lack of it. Nothing or USA truck could not handle though, at least in the beginning. It was a jolly ride. No local pleb would catch up to us. Quite nice actually. Sitting in the warm car, looking at all the trees passing by. When night came, we stayed at the old lady uh, Valia's house. She's a good old gal, you know. She lives alone with Petka, her cat, and doesn't fear anything. A real queen of her ruined gas station. But this time, she didn't just feed us and lay us to bed. She, to she told us a story <clears throat> about the skin worm, how it targets people that travel alone, how it drives them mad and destroys their companions to eat them afterwards. <sighs> I think there's a very good chance that this uh, lady is the one responsible for your accident. And maybe even drug you, all of you. What kind of beast is this skin worm? There is no such beast. That's moronic. Old wives tales. Proletarian uh, folklore. Made up by people that trade with old Vatya. The legend goes, there's a mutant in the local swamp, that if you walk uh, there all alone, falls on top of you from a branch and crawls inside your mouth. And when inside you, he connects to your nervous system, you know, destroys your personality and switches it to his own. You become sort of a doll, controlled by the worm from the inside, but you don't look the part. Nobody ever notices your change. Only one major difference. The worm has trouble with your original memories. It mixes up names and locations and all that. And do you know why he takes you over? To lure real humans into traps and feast on their flesh. Only human flesh is nutritious to the worm, they say. But that's all bullshit. Moronic bullshit. So what happened next? The man's face fills with deep torment. We continue our drive in the morning. Oh, we'd be in Krasno come noon. If not for the accursed fog, you could have cut it with a knife. My Boris uh, was an ace driver, but he couldn't see squat and crashed into a tree. And then we all fell. The tree, the goods, the car, and we inside it. All went into that stinking sinkhole. Me, myself, I on the guard, and Kasparov the guide got out uh, through the roof of the car, but Boris could not handle it. He hit his head over the wheel and sank to the bottom with all the stuff minutes later. The water bubbled for half an hour or so. What's next? Then we saw that's that we are in the same swamp from Valya's story. Kasparov started uh, running first, that's what you get with locals, just straight away ran through the underbush. Me and Ivan we followed, but Ivan fell into a bush, and while I kept on running, 
he cramped his leg or something along those lines. In other words, we lost each other for a while and regrouped only when we got here. This is a bit unrealistic. The, all of them are so eager to uh, retell their experience and also they are remembering so clearly. If I was retelling this story, it would be Fuck, we crashed in the swamp. We got lost. It was pretty fucking dark. Uh, I heard some story about the snake yesterday. Who cares? <laughs> you think now it's a great time to start looking for some local uh, to help us out. Not for those two. Kasparov, the freaking savage, told us he won't move or show us the way anymore because he can't guarantee some of us aren't changed by the worm. And Ivan, who I trusted with my life, started repeating the same bullshit, saying, Sevolod, I'm not too sure you're not infected by the worm. I'm not sure about the guy either. Maybe you're both cannibals now. Maybe you're just waiting until I turn my back on you. And now, we are in this dilemma. I want to go Look for help to get my car out of the swamp, but I can't do this with no guide. And the guide I have won't move, since he's afraid we'll eat him. And my guard simply wants to abandon us as soon as his leg gets better. Meanwhile, he's threatening to shoot anyone who makes a move. I shoot him myself, but I have no gun. And somewhat pity the idiot, idiot. he served me for years on end, didn't he? So that's why we're here, just sitting, waiting for something to come out of it. I can help. Uh, I spoke with all of you and made an observation. <laughs> what kind of observation? All three of you are okay people, just got scared. I got fooled by fault this, that's it. All, all of you are saying different things, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, just let's just go with the first one. The man slowly turns his head towards you and looks you straight in the eyes. In his glance there's something new now, something you can't properly understand without saying a word. The man smiles and nods to you. Thanks for your kind words. Now you better go. Okay. I mean, if I had to guess on somebody, it would be him, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Ah, oh, fucking, I don't know. But more importantly, I don't really care to know. That's the problem here. Game, you failed to grasp my interest with this figuring stuff out part. Yeah. So for reading about it that much. Just for just to uh come to a unsatisfying conclusion. Can I just steal from him? So this is the only one who has a gun. What if I started stabbing people? Oh, slash is not good. I can start aiming. I'm just I'm just curious. So they are just completely uh, uh, together now. Fine. You bastards, I'm leaving. Can I leave? Please tell me I can leave. <laughs> we gotta check out the spear or whatever that is. Drunken Lair. Does it have a name? Bert. That, that's all. Is this the... No, this map is big. 
Anyway guys, this is a good time to take a break, so thanks for watching and see you next time.